Conclusion. Earlier in the book, I posed the question, is it better to have loved and lost than to have never loved at all? The poetic answer is yes, of course. Love is the most beautiful thing in the world. It's what makes life worth living. What if that isn't the case? What if the unknown is better left in mystery? In mathematics, a rule can only exist when there are no cases that can be presented in opposition to your line of thought. The Pythagorean theorem works in every instance. It's simple logic. If I know A and I know B, but I don't know C, I can use that information to figure out the unknown. If I had the sum of the squares of both A and B, then I can take the value and take the square root of it. In simple division, when your denominator is zero, your answer is undefined because you cannot evenly divide items into zero groups. If you say it out loud, it doesn't even sound good to hear. Maybe the concept of having something and losing it isn't worth the pursuit. When asked, heroin addicts typically say they are chasing the euphoric feeling of the first hit. When they describe the sensation and everything else surrounding the few moments of that high, it seems obvious by the actions that it's worth losing everything else just to get back to that space. With the knowledge of that possibility of having the best feeling known to man on countless numbers of testimonies, would you try heroin? Another immeasurable joy of life is parenthood. Sometimes parents undergo what some might categorize as the worst feeling known to humankind, the death of a child. If you have lost a child, you have my deepest condolences and my heart goes out to you. I cannot speak on this circumstance from personal experience. I can speak on behalf of friends and family who have. My bet is if you ask them if they feel better now after their loss, you wouldn't get an overwhelming majority of them saying their pain was worth their loss. My assumption is that if you propose a scenario where they knew the outcome of their child's lifespan, a large segment of the group would admit to wishing their child was never born in the first place. When you are raised in poverty and you don't know anything else, you have nothing to compare your lifestyle to. Your daily interactions are just chalked up as normal. Not ideal, not easy, but tolerable. When you don't know what you don't know, ignorance is bliss. Now on the flip side, if you take someone who was born into wealth and strip them of it all, you could break that person's spirit. Imagine only knowing a life filled with luxury and the finest of all things, and at the blink of an eye, it's all gone. Like mathematical logic, if there are instances where the concept doesn't apply, then you do not have a rule. Am I saying don't pursue love? Actually, I am. You shouldn't pursue love. Love should happen naturally. I'm not trying to convince you that love is bad. I'm also not trying to talk you out of procreating or pursuing wealth. The thread of this book is the theory that you can achieve your aims in life with the proper mindset. In each story I shared with you throughout this book, I had a turning point or a wake-up call. The realizations I have experienced over the years have served as reminders that with the proper outlook on a state of affairs, you can come out on the other side better than expected using conventional approaches to your condition. Forgetting everything and resetting isn't the answer to all your problems. Just as the hammer isn't the right instrument for every repair, that doesn't make the hammer useless. When required, having a hammer is the only way to get the job done. And on the same note, forgetting everything and resetting can serve you as a valuable tool for your success. The utilization of this technique can optimize your opportunities if used correctly. As I am writing this book, my country is at civil unrest. The murder of George Floyd has led to protests and riots in cities all across the states. That, coupled with the COVID-19 pandemic, and the new norm surrounding social distancing has America on edge. Poor leadership, an increase in unemployment and poverty on top of the resurgence of outright racism and bigotry in the society have us at a boiling point. The masses could use fear right now. We can all collectively use a deep breath and a fresh look at what we are facing. Fear isn't about forgiving and forgetting. It is about taking a step back and reassessing. Sometimes, when you're in the fight, you can't see what an outsider can see. At times, we can all be blinded by our motivations, biases, and emotions. The key is not to let these factors control the outcome of what we are encountering. 
By starting over and taking an appraisal, perhaps you can find common ground and use those as building blocks towards a solution to the problem. In other cases, you can clearly define your issue and unequivocally determine it is time to remove yourself from the situation. I thank you and I hope that you have positive takeaways from this book. I hope that you find success now and moving forward.